Hey guys, hello and welcome to another Divi tutorial brought to you by the team here at Divi Engine. My name is Roby and I'm going to show you how to build a custom My Account page utilizing the tools found within any Divi install. So this is what our standard WooCommerce My Account page looks like in Divi. It doesn't look very fantastic, but we're going to change that right now. So let's flip over and here we have a look at what we'll be creating today. This is much more appealing much more welcoming and your customer is going to have a much greater time navigating this. So get ready, strap in. We're going to build something awesome today. Now to follow along for the tutorial, make sure that you have the latest versions of Divi and WooCommerce installed. As of recording this video, it is Divi 4.9.3 and WooCommerce 5.1.0. Now we've broken the tutorial down into five easy steps. You can follow along with me right here. Or you can head over to the post on the Divi Engine blog where you'll find all the settings to all the different components. We even have a JSON download for you that you can just import right into your Divi install without needing to lift a finger to get the same result. And with that, why don't we get to step one and get going. All right, so the first step in this tutorial is to go ahead and edit the row that contains all the information. It's going to be a text module that contains the short code for the WooCommerce My Account page. The quickest and easiest way to get there is go to the My Account page on the front end of your site and then at the top of the page, once you're there, click the Edit Page button. Now this doesn't show you Divi modules yet, so to activate the Divi Builder, all we need to do is click the link up there that says Use Divi Builder. It's going to think about it and then it's going to present us with these three options. We're going to select the first one, Use Existing Content. Boom. Okay. So now we see that everything's been converted to Divi modules and we're going to jump right in with that row and we're going to give it a cool background that kind of differentiates between the different endpoints for WooCommerce, all those links that link to the different My Account page um, areas and um, give a little bit of a transparent background to the right hand side there to let that um, cool background through a little bit. So to give it that gradient background, we're going to go to background, select the gradient, add gradient. Now the first color is super easy, just plain white. And the second one, we actually select white again, but to let that uh, background come through a little bit and give the page a little bit more depth, we're going to give it an opacity of about 85%. Um, now for the gradient settings, we want to set it at a 90 degree angle. And to give it that hard line instead of a soft line between the two different colors, we're going to say it's going to start at 30%. And then it's going to end at 30%. So that makes it that nice hard line. Now the next thing we want to do is go to the design tab. And we want to set a little bit of um, padding on the left and right hand side of the text. We're going to set it to 3%. We just link it up. Now that text will have 3% on each side. That's the actual content for the My Account page. And then we'll give it a nice rounded corner of 5 pixels. And the last step over here, we want to give it a box shadow to, again, enhance that depth a little bit. And we'll just select the second option here next to none. And then we're going to say cool, OK. And then let's kind of preview here. So all we're seeing at the moment is we see that box shadow populating in there. Um, and I had to kind of edit that uh, short code just really quick because sometimes Divi is weird and it doesn't load it immediately. But you see, if you click quickly on the gear button on that module and exit out, the information populates. So that's basically it for this first step. On the second step, we're going to be styling the actual um, text that we see there, the dashboard, orders, downloads, addresses, all that fun stuff. But before we go to that, we want to see that little background that we just did with the gradient. And just temporarily to preview that, let's just go into the section settings and give it a quick red background. And now we can actually see the work that we did. It looks pretty OK already, but we're going to do some more work to enhance this page even more. OK, so here for the second step, all the action happens um, on that text module in the Design tab. So let's open up the settings for this module, hit that Design button, and then select Text. We're going to select um, a cool font here, the Roboto font. We think it works well, but you can select any font you choose. Um, and then we're going to give it a cool green color. And our color that we selected is 0FE588. Oh, why is that doing? 
zero F E five A eight. And there we go. We've got our green color in there. Just hit the checkbox there. We're going to up the text size a little bit to 16. Okay, that's looking better already. And now what we want to do is we want to modify the link style. So we do that up here. Select the link icon. We'll just make sure that this is also set to Roboto. And then we will go ahead and give those links another color of uh, clicking in there, 5430CE. Okay, cool purple color. That's looking fantastic. And the next step here is we want to style the unordered list. So these dots on the left hand side. So we're going to select that. Again, we want to make sure that we're using the Roboto font. Just in case something weird happens with the CSS, uh, we like to do that. We're going to go down and select the, um, we don't need to change the color here. That's going to pull from the other side and put that to 21. Nice big links. And we want to set the line height here to 2 EM. And that's going to give us some nice spacing, a little bit of breathing room. And um, if we go further down a little bit, we can select the um, type of style that we're using. So we're going to select a square. That's looking pretty funky. Looks good. And then the indent was set to 5%. Cool. And that just makes sure that, you know, it, it's a little bit more responsive, that on a responsive, uh, if somebody's on a mobile site or something, that it, it spaces things accordingly. And then we'll just say yes. And wow, that looks so much better already. Um, but we're not done yet. We still got some work to do. And in the next step, we're going to take out that red background that we put in temporarily and add a really cool um, SVG background. So we're going to show you how to do that. So let's go on to the next step. So for the third step, we're going to do something cool. We'll be adding an SVG background to that section um, that you saw in the initial preview of what we'll be building today. And to do that, we head over here to SVG Backgrounds. You see the URL on the screen. We'll link it in the description also, and also in the blog post. And when you scroll down, you see all these different options for SVG Backgrounds. Very cool stuff. You click on one of them, you'll see it populates, gives you a little preview of the background. You, and you can use any of them. We use the subtle prism one. And uh, we'll go ahead and customize that. Now we're going to use those colors we used earlier. Um, so for the first one, we'll say 5, 4, 30CE, which should give that purple color. Yep, there it is. And for the second one, 0FE5A8, which should give us that green color that we had going on. Nope, didn't like that. Let's try that again. Zero. Oh, I put an O. Jeepers. 0FE5A8. There we go. That's winning. And that's all we're doing here. So you'll see here that it's got all this CSS output. You're going to go ahead and copy that. Um, and then we're going to go back and paste it on to uh, that section background. OK, so back now on our uh, editing page in the, the vBuilder, let's select that section and open up the settings. And let's delete out that ugly, ugly red background that we have there. And you'll see things go back to normal. Now when we go to the Advanced tab, we'll expand Custom CSS. And in the main element section, we just go ahead and we paste that. Now, don't be alarmed. I know that this design doesn't show up here on the uh, the VBuilder side. But let's save that really quick. And then I'll show you what happens on the front end. OK, so now if we go and view the page, you'll see that, wow, OK, there it is. So you've got that awesome SVG background. And what's cool about this, these are very lightweight things to include within your website. And as you can see, all those possibilities that were on that page are easy to implement just doing it this way. So that's pretty cool stuff. So that's really all we have for step three before we go on to step four. Okay, so step four is another quick one. We're going to be adding a page title. And to do that, We'll head back to the edit section to open up the Divi Boulder. And let's just go visual here. 
I'm a visual person and it is nicer to see the work as I do it. I like that instant gratification. Okay, so the first step to do is we're gonna add a new row. So click the plus button and add a single column row. And the first module we'll add is just another text module. And that will open up that. Now for the text, we're gonna add a funky lowercase my account with a period at the end. I don't know why, I just think it looks cool. And then we'll head over to the design tab. On the design tab, we're gonna open up the text setting and go ahead and give it the Poppins font. And you'll see that change right there. Let's give it a, well, yeah, let's give it a color of white. And let's give it a size of 64. Oh, that was too slow. 64. All right. And last thing that we'll be doing over here is making sure that it's got line height of 1 EM. And I lied. One more thing, spacing for the top and the bottom to give it a little bit of breathing room. 50 pixels. And just link it up so it's top and bottom. And then you can click the check mark. And then what we want to do is drag this up above so that it's actually a title for the page. And look at that. That looks pretty darn awesome, I think. So that's step four. And now we're on to the last step of our tutorial, step five, where we're going to be adding a little promo bar at the bottom of the page. Okay, so the first step is a little bit more involved, adding this uh, call to action um, promo bar at the bottom of the page. We'll get started by adding, just like we did before, another single column row. And this time we'll be adding a call to action module. And that's going to pop open. And let's enter a title in here that we say, don't forget to check out our summer sale. Don't forget to check, oops, check out our summer sale. Boom. And then for the button, we'll say shop now. And down on the body, we'll say, I don't know, save up to 25% of our hottest, hottest products. Save up to 25% of our hottest products. All right, that looks good. And just making sure that the link for the button goes to the right spot. We go forward slash shop forward slash. And that's it for this area. Oh, wait, wait, wait. One more thing, the background. Want to make sure that we add a fun background and we are reusing our brand colors here. So we're going to say, well, we can just click recent year actually and then we'll add our green color. How's that? That's much easier and quicker. Now heading to the design tab, the first thing we'll do is open up the text want to make sure that our text is center aligned. And um, before heading to the title text, go down. We'll give the title text, again, the font Poppins. We can now select it from the list here. We'll make this semi-bold. And scrolling down a bit further, just make sure that's centered. Color is white. And then for the size, we'll make it a little bit bigger. We'll make it 28 pixels so it stands out a little bit more. And then moving on to the body, we want to make sure that right here, we're utilizing the Roboto font. We'll keep that weight the same. That's just centered again, white again. And the text size, uh, text size will give a little bump again to 18. That's looking better. And um, that's it. Then we move on to the button and give that a little bit of custom love. That's gonna stay the same size. We'll make sure that the text is white. And then for the background, just like we did earlier, just like recent, we're gonna add that purple color in there. And we don't like that border. So let's get that out of there. And then maybe just, um, you know, you can add a different font to the button here as well. If you so choose, let's just go and kind of stick to our little Roboto theme. There we go. It gives a nice little bold uh, feeling as well. So going on to the sizing of this, 
we are going to give it a maximum width of 750. And the reason we're doing this is so that, you know, it's not the same width as the account. It stands out a little bit more, just gives a little bit different vibe. We'll make sure that that's centered. And then the last thing, couple things we'll do is we're going to round out the border to kind of match that branding. And last thing before we make this thing a beauty happen, bam, we add that box shadow. It just lift it off the page a little bit again. And the guys, that's it. That I mean, how quick and easy was that to really create an account page that looks night and day? Let's save that. Thinking, thinking, and then go view the page. There we are. Fully recreated our My Account page from something that looked pretty awful to something that looks unique. We learned an extra new few features like adding an SVG background so this is just the beginning of customizing your WooCommerce install with Divi um, and all the different options you have. Um, if you check the description, you'll see different links to other tutorials that we've done that show you a range of different customizations available to you and things like category pages for um, your product layouts and stuff like that. Um, and if you really want to start differentiating your site from other websites on the web, um, is definitely checking out our Body Commerce plugin that has hundreds of customizations that you can really fine tune the look of uh, your Divi uh, WooCommerce install. Um, we have a little demo of uh, a My Account page done in that. So if you guys hang on to the end here, you'll get to see that. And um, if you want to know more, you can also download the JSON file for this layout. So you don't have to redo everything yourself if you're in a rush. And also, again, if you are a uh, more of a text person that wants to copy and paste all these settings, check out the tutorial post on our website. It's also linked in the description of this video. And keep an eye out. Every Tuesday is Tutorial Tuesday here at Divi Engine. So we'll be coming at you with another one next week. Okay, guys, talk to you soon.